in this galaxy is a mathematical probability of three million Earth-type planets. <laughs> and in all of the universe, three million million galaxies like this. <laughs> Have you ever looked up at the night sky in all of its glory and taken out your phone to try and capture what your eyes are seeing, just to realize that the pictures can't do it nearly enough justice? See, the thing about our mesmerizing and extraordinary universe is that it's impossible to capture on camera. Or, at least, it seems like it. The thing is, we do know that it's possible. So how do these people get such good pictures of outer space? I went to the one person I know who could answer this question best. Dad. What? This is my dad. He basically knows everything about everything, especially when it comes to space. He taught me everything from using a camera to even flying a plane. He's a cable modem engineer with many hobbies, but he's always seemed to be most passionate about astronomy. These days, he spends a lot of time photographing the sky. So what's the answer to my problem according to him? Astrophotography. Astrophotography is the imaging of celestial objects and other phenomena that occurs in space. I wanted to see it all in action though, so we packed up the car and drove down to an open field to set it up. In case you were wondering, here is the ultimate guide to astrophotography at night. 1. You have to go on a night when it's clear. That means there can't be any clouds in the sky. 2. Light pollution is another thing you have to look out for. Taking pictures in areas with high amounts of light pollution or direct light pollution can affect the outcome of your images. 3. You need some sort of camera and lens. This varies depending on what your target is, but you want a longer lens if you're trying to photograph really small or far away objects, and you can use a smaller lens if you're just trying to photograph large objects like the moon. 4. One of the most important things is to have patience. Getting everything set up and working is one thing, but actually taking the pictures can take a while. 5. With that being said, you spend a lot of time in the dark, so getting over your fear of the dark is important in this case as well. So the first thing you gotta do when you bring the tripod out is get it roughly leveled. I gotta screw the mount on top of the tripod. North is that direction, so I roughly align it. And then I use an app on my phone for the compass. Then I can bring this up to the side of it and get this fairly close to be mechanically aligned with the true north. And then I had to balance the scope for it to be tracking precisely. Everything needs to be balanced as best as possible so that the mount doesn't have to work very hard to guide. So is this bringing it home? Um, yeah, it's what they call the home position that just allows the servos to get uh, aligned in a known position there. Before the, the scope will, or the mount will start to track, um, the, the two servos need to get mechanically aligned to kind of know their, their position. Then the software knows where it's at for the rest of the night. But every time you set up the mount, you just do this find home procedure. It takes about 20 seconds, so it's no big deal. That's Venus. You can see the ecliptic there. There's Mercury, Jupiter, 
Neptune, Saturn. Typically, when it gets dark, we're going to be up in, I don't know, around 750 to 1,000 millisecond exposures. And you can see how much light it's gathering. It's not nearly dark enough. When you're done setting up, explain all the different parts you have to do. All right, well, I, I have to set the exposure time. I'm gonna set the binning to four by four, which combines four pixels in the camera sensor. Um, it's a very high resolution camera. I don't need that resolution for what I'm doing right now, at least. That allows it to actually combine the light of four pixels as if it's one big pixel, so it makes it more sensitive. So I'm going to take my first exposure, see what it looks like. Okay, let's go over to M43. And it found it. Let's take a photo. Let's take that one up to 20 seconds with a binning of 4x4. Four four. Oh, look at that. So with one photo, that's what you can get. That was a 20 second exposure, four by four binning. Now this is just a black and white uh, rendering of it. So what I'd have to do is take a series of photos, probably about two hours worth, and then combine those, stack those, and using something like Deep Stacker, and then post process it to bring out all the colors try to get rid of some of the light pollution and some of the bright stars that, that kind of distort things. Once I get that set up and running then I can just take a nap out here for two hours. It does it all automatically. What do you keep from me in your silence? Why do you sleep in cigarette ashes? You're still my baby, living 